Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Mario and today is day four of the GoWise USA air fryer oven. We're going to be using the steak rotisserie again, but we're going to be cooking codfish in it today. So stick around. So I got my cod loin fish from BJ's and I am going to season one of them and I am going to bread the other one. Now I am going to use for the breading a combination of my panko plain breadcrumbs, the seasoned Italian breadcrumbs and this already has some Romano cheese in it however I'm also gonna add a little bit of Parmesan cheese so there'll be equal mix of those and I'll bread one piece in that and for the seasoning of the other ones I'm gonna use uh, Tony Charcher's original Creole seasoning I don't know how to pronounce it so that's all I'm saying so here's a close-up of that So, uh, first things first, in order to make room to dirty less dishes, I am actually going to uh, put the season one in here first. I am going to spray a little olive oil on that so that uh, the seasoning has a better chance of sticking because I'm worried about rotisserie knocking that seasoning off. Put that on there. Turn it over. Missed that again. It's all right. It gets on my... Uh, butcher block here. I love this thing, the Camco. I have a link in the description if you're interested. I put this on my stove top whenever I'm prepping food and I'm not using the stove. It's a really nice addition. Get a little more here. And we are going to stick this right in the pan, but actually before I do, I am just going to spray this with a little oil because the last thing I want is the fish to stick to this. Get that in there. And we're going to have to spray the top as well. And we'll just sit this here for the... Okay, get our one egg. Get that nice and mixed. And get this out of here. Gonna dip the egg. Gonna dip the fish in the egg. Leave that there in a second. I'm gonna rinse this and put the breadcrumb mixture on here. Now this is a spare container, so I already have a 50-50 mix in here of the panko and the Italian. So I'm just going to put, don't need a lot, I'm just going to put some in there and add the cheese. So whatever's there, I'm going to add half of that. That'll give me my equal portions. Now it may look like a lot, but I'm probably going to double bread this. I'm going to add a little more cheese. All right. Get that nice and breaded. Redip it in egg, and then I'm going to redip it in the breading. Maybe next time around, if I uh, have an extra piece of fish, I'll try it with the Kentucky Colonel again. That tasted really good. I have to say, I never used to eat a lot of fish, but now that I have the air fryer, I've eaten a lot more fish than I used to. So I'll substitute the uh, what I usually eat chicken or beef for uh, this. Make sure I get it on the sides. Now two things we gotta do. We're gonna spray one side of this. Because remember, in the rotisserie, this is always gonna be turning, so we need to make sure this is oiled. Now ideally, I would have put this in the refrigerator for maybe a half an hour to get really get this breadcrumbs to stick, but I'm gonna forego that today. Get this, put it in upside down. Now I'm gonna Hold this over here to try to contain the mess. Spray it down again. We're going to hinge the top on. It's not letting me go down as tight as I want to, but as long as the fish doesn't spin around, I think we're good. So let's get the air fryer oven ready. Okay, got the air fryer oven plugged in. Again, when you open this up, make sure you don't let it drop because it's not counterbalanced. And I'm able to store all the accessories in it, you know, the mesh tray. Here's the good replacement and the broken tray. Take the two mesh pieces out. So everything stores in there pretty well if you're storing this, but if you're using it on a regular basis, you're gonna need to uh, look to find a different place to put this stuff. I'm not gonna use this to put it in because everything's cold right now. So what I'm going to do, again, flat bar side on the right, the groove on the left, put this in at an angle, turn it until it pokes in, Lift it up and get it on the other side. That's good. Uh, drip tray is in. 
Now, I'm going to power this on it, and I'm curious what the fish setting is. This says 360 of 15. That's about what I used to cook it. I think I used to do 370. So I'm going to let it start at this. However, I will turn the temperature up later to crisp the breadcrumbs on the one piece of fish. We're probably not going to need 15 minutes, but I'm going to wait and see. But this cooks slower than my regular GoWise air fryer, so we'll check it in about five minutes. Almost forgot to turn on the rotisserie. There we go. I'm not a fan of lemon, so I got some, uh, well, butter, if you call it that. And I'm going to microwave that, and that's what I'm going to use instead of the lemon. Just a halftime reminder, there are links in the description for my Facebook, Instagram, Google+, Plus, etc., pages that you can see what I'm up to on a regular basis. There's also links in the description for some of the things I use here. Let's keep moving. Okay, this has been going 10 minutes. Let's take it out and see how it is. I'm waiting for it to get level with the lack facing up. Take that out, set it here. I'm going to shut this off so it can be a little quieter. Now, fish, they say about 145, and I never check the temperature on most of my foods, but I'm doing that for the sake of the video so we can see what it comes up to. Okay, the breaded is at about 130. Let's check what the unbreaded is. That's probably gonna cook a little faster. That's 132. So we do have to put it back in for a little bit. So let me get this going on the fish setting, and we're gonna lower this down to three minutes maybe. Now, I will warn you that while the camera was off, I found the breadcrumbs were falling off because the chicken wasn't clamped down tight enough in the unit. So I had took it out and I pushed it down. I had to push it down quite hard because if I didn't, it still spun around. So some breadcrumbs are gonna be missing, but that's more of a warning to you that, uh, and the, basically the reason being is because one piece of fish has breading and one doesn't. So it was sitting kind of crooked. It was a lot to slide around. If I had breaded both, it probably wouldn't have been an issue. Now this is definitely hot this time around, so I am going to use the tool. Let's see how hard it is to get everything aligned. Okay, three minutes, we'll see you then. Okay, let's give it a check. Oh, spun itself right side up from the weight, that's good. Let's give that a temperature check. Alright, a little bit over, 150, but that's okay. Okay, now for the fun part, getting this lid off. I should invest in a pair of silicone gloves, cause uh, huh. all right, there we go. It still is very hot, so don't do what I'm doing. Hot, hot. Okay, let's get these out of here. As you can see, see some of the breadcrumbs came off, but this is uh, nice and uh, toasted, you know, and you don't have to flip it, I guess, it takes longer to cook, but you're not flipping it, and it, in theory, should be evenly cooked. Now, as you notice, some of the fish stuck there. That's because I didn't probably spray it well enough. Okay, let's get some of that butter on there. I think I overdid it with the butter, but that's okay. I'm going to put a little bit on the side, maybe a little bit on here, too. Why not? That's enough. Look at that. That looks awesome. Okay, let's give it a try. All right, here we go. Look at that. That looks pretty awesome. Now, one thing I didn't expect here is I expected the Tony Creole original uh, seasoning to like a lot of it to fall off, but it didn't. So it could be a bit much, but let's see. Yeah, awesome. Looks awesome inside. I tell you, that Tony Creole is really good. Um, URHC pointed me over to that. And um, I guess when I use Kentucky Kernel, Kentucky Kernel season flour and, um, you know, breadcrumbs, I do that to help the taste because I'm not a huge fish fan. And the breading and the flouring, it helps it. But, you know, I'm trying to have less bread because it's just wow that's moist and good because it's just not as good for you so the creole is fast becoming a favorite with me okay 
Okay, now we're gonna try some with the uh, the triple breading of panko, Italian, and palm cheese. And the butter, let's not forget that. Mm. <coughs> These are both awesome. Wow, I'm uh, pretty happy with the way that came out. Now, when I first said, uh, I think it was it was 15 minutes, the time would default to it, and I said, ah, that's too much. And in my mind, I forgot, the air fryer takes like 12, this takes longer. <clears throat> I guess the benefit with the rotisserie is you're not constantly turning your food and checking it, whatever, you could just peek in there and you can see how it's doing, because it's, so it's cooking, it should be cooking even. Um, Overall, I'm happy with the way this turned out. Uh, the fish came out good, the breading, the seasoning, you know, that's the way I prepared it, they came good. And the oven did a good job. Um, again, it took a couple minutes longer, but it wasn't a big deal. Um, my expectations have had to change for this a little bit, simply because it takes longer to cook. Um, but otherwise, um, you know, not bad. Anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing, hit the notification bell so you know when I'm putting out a new video. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. I don't want to forget to unplug that air fryer, folks. Have a good one. Oh, Janet, this is for you. I do have broccoli. Cheers.